You know, it seems like it's always election season. Arizona is predicted to be the highest spent, the highest spending for campaigns is expected to be in Arizona. Swing state Arizona projected to be lead the U.S. in 2024 campaign spending. But in, in, this is a th- here's a story from KTAR. If you want to check it out on the website, federal judge strikes down two Arizona voting proof of citizenship laws. One of them, House Bill 2492, disallowed Arizonans from registering to vote without proof of citizenship. Governor Ducey signed this into law in March of 2022. Um, Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark of the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division called those requirements onerous. She said the onerous document, uh, documentary proof of citizenship requirement for certain federal elections constitutes a textbook violation of the National Voter Registration Act. Um, so this the passed in 93, it requires states to accept federal forms on their own for voters. However, Ari- under the House bill, Arizonans couldn't register to vote with federal forms alone. Elections officials turned them away and the federal forms weren't accompanied by proof of citizenship. For nearly 30 years, the National Voter Registration Act has helped to move states in the right direction by eliminating unnecessary requirements that have historically made it harder for eligible voters to access the registration rolls. This is what's strange to me. We have had so so many arguments about elections in this country. 2000 and the hanging chads is, was really kind of what brought things out then. Uh, Florida was in question. We know that George W. Bush won the election in 2000, but his brother was the governor of Florida in 2000, and this happened in Florida. So there were the accusations that the governor of Florida helped cheat in the election to give George W. Bush the win. 2016, Hillary Clinton said the Russian collusion, that the Russians uh, changed the results of the election. She still maintains that uh, to this day. And then what, of course, the other part of this, then you look at 2020, Donald Trump says the election was stolen from him. Uh, We heard about voter fraud. We had people in 2022 watching polling places and uh, 2000 mules. The documentary came out. And so we've seen both sides of the aisles take turns saying that our elections don't work. And then when reasonable laws, there was a story that was out last week that across all demographics, it crosses party lines, it crosses racial lines, it crosses gender lines. People are in favor of reasonable, reasonable election reforms. Much of it has to do with voter ID. The idea that you have to prove you're a citizen, that it somehow gives, it takes away some people's access to the polls and voter registration is a false narrative. It, it just is. That all of us, you want to put some of this to bed. You want to put, you want to finally put a period at the end of some of this. There's some things that Arizona could be doing that would make sense. Clean up the voter rolls. We're not going to get rid of early voting. Without, let's just put that aside for a moment. The, the, the odd thing about this, and I know I'm at odds with my party, not my party, with some in my political party, the Republican Party, Um, Republicans were the ones that voted early in bigger numbers than Democrats. That was historically the case. I think 2020 was the first election where it may have switched around. But classically, Republicans love early voting. They love to be able to sit at their kitchen table with a cup of coffee or whatever it is and do their research, fill out their ballots, and mail them in on their own timeline. I myself like to go to the polls. It has nothing to do with early voting or being against it. I just prefer to go to the polls. But we are not going to get rid of early voting. It is here to stay. But the reasonable things that can be done to ensure that it's better is cleaning up the voter rolls, making sure if you move, duplicate ballots are not sent out. There are so many different things that you can do that would make it easier, and that's one of them. Having to show ID to vote is another one. The vast majority of voters in both political parties think it is a good idea for you to prove who you are in order to vote. Why is that a problem? I mean, who is that disenfranchising? These arguments continue while people, you're not going to solve the problem, and that's the issue. You are still going to have people say that it was cheating. Hillary Clinton denied 2016 was a legitimate election, along with a huge number. And what I'm going to do sooner rather than later is we're going to dig up a lot of these prominent elected people in the Democratic Party that in 2016 said, I'm not going to Trump's 
inauguration. He is, I don't believe he's a legitimate president. I don't think that he was legally elected. He is not our legal president. They said it all during 2016, just like the Republicans did in 2020. So if we want to resolve this, there's got to be things that can be done. Hillary Clinton has already said publicly in a video, which I'll dig this up as well, that the um, radical Supreme Court and Republicans are already planning to steal the 2024 presidential election. That's what Hillary Clinton said in a video. So she's already set the stage that if Joe Biden does not win re-election, especially if he's running against Donald Trump and Trump wins that election, that it was stolen, that the radical Supreme Court, along with Republicans, are planning to steal that presidential election. You want to quell some of these things, we have got to do a better job of securing our elections. And by saying that this somehow disenfranchises voters is a joke to me, I think most people in both political parties and independents agree that making elections better is the right thing to do.